Hello everybody, how's it going? Like Butter here, and today I wanted to make an Escape from Tarkov beginner's guide. There are a ton of new players showing interest in Escape from Tarkov, so I kind of wanted to make this video to give you guys some tips and tricks when starting out playing Tarkov. I've been having so many people asking um, like what to do when you're starting out with Tarkov, and uh, since I do have a decent amount of experience on this game, I've been playing it for years, uh, I'm coming up on like, I think 1,200 hours, something around that ballpark. Um, uh, you know, obviously I stopped playing this uh, a few times and had breaks in between because there were issues that are no longer issues in the game. I actually think this is probably the best uh, Tarkov has ever been. It's it's most pretty much in its best form. So if you're just getting into the game now, it's a great time to get into it. Okay, so what is Escape from Tarkov? Escape from Tarkov is a looter shooter military simulator mixed with survival aspects and kind of like a loot hoarder, as some would like to call it. Um, the idea of this game is to make as much money as you possibly can. And by doing that, you go into what are called raids, which are essentially matches. And you try to escape with more gear than you bring in. Okay, so let's go over the basics of what you should be doing if you are brand new to the game. This is a screen you're going to see uh, after downloading the game. Some people have um, questions about how to install the game. If you go to your profile on the website, you sign in. Um, if you go to the profile, there will be an install button when you scroll down. Also, they're going to be doing Twitch drops coming up in a couple days. So if you're watching this video when it goes live, uh, you'll be able to earn some extra loot by watching my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash likebutterlive. I will be participating in the Twitch drops. But this is the basic like menu of what you're going to see. So the first thing is if you go to your character, this is where it's going to show your loadout. On the left side, this is going to be all your equipment that is equipped. So you got your weapon, your secondary weapon, your melee weapon, you got your pistol slot, you have eyewear, face cover, headwear, body armor, uh, and if you're using earphones, then you have your tactical rig, which is for your magazines and that kind of stuff. You have your pockets, which you can put either uh, meds or grenades or any extra loot that you find around the map. And then you have your backpack as well, which is also going to uh, be able to stack larger items like weapons and and that kind of stuff that you come across now when you're starting out obviously you won't have any of this stuff this is all stuff that you earn or that you can buy from vendors and this is probably one of the most important things about tarkov the pouch so you're going to lose everything here on death outside of your pouch so if you bought the highest version of the game um you're gonna have a gamma container if you bought the standard version you're gonna have an alpha which is only gonna be four slots and if you bought i think the in-between version which I'm, I'm trying to remember what it's called i forget it's i think it's a 60 dollar version uh you will be able to have like a six spot container now don't worry you're going to be able to earn bigger containers as you play um you can buy a beta container uh from peacekeeper i think and you can also earn a kappa case if you do all of the tasks which i'm getting pretty close to to doing i have two uh tasks actually here to to turn in um so we're gonna go through and i'm gonna show you guys all that stuff but right off the rip the best thing you can do is kind of learn the inventory system over here is your stash. Your stash is basically your inventory that you're going to drag items from your character over into when you're going to either sell or hold on to stuff for quests. So you can see when I scroll down here, um, I have like some armor saved up. I have a stack of backpacks, which a good tip is that you can stack bags inside of bags infinitely. Um, you know, so you can just have... The, bags 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 and the reason i have all these stacked up is just so that i have bags to bring into raids with me there's no way i'm gonna get through all these backpacks all these backpacks you're seeing here from the last two weeks i actually had a bug with one of the tasks where you have to turn in uh two pilgrim bags which is the big blue bag uh into ragman and he actually hoovered like a huge stack of my backpack. So be very careful with that. Make sure you have nothing in your backpack uh, when you're turning items in. It usually won't let you, but for some reason it doesn't register another backpack as a backpack, but I'm sure they're gonna fix that. I did uh, let BSG know. Um, so hopefully that's fixed in the future. Um, but you know, you can stack like and save a lot of stuff and you can also get containers. So you guys are seeing that I have weapon cases here uh, that I have my weapons stored in so that if I wanna bring guns into raids, I can do that. 
So just to give you guys an idea of how much extra space these weapon cases are going to give you, um, here's a thick case. It's actually called a thick case. I know it's amazing. Um, so, you know, you can stack a lot of weapons in these cases, but these cases are going to be very expensive as well. You have meds cases that you can stack your meds in. Um, you have a sca lucky uh, scav junk box, which is probably going to be one of your first purchases if you're saving up these kind of items, which are kind of like utility items that usually you would sell to therapists or on the flea market, depending on how much it's going. But we'll talk about that here in a few seconds. But um, the, the, the reason a lot of people are saving up this stuff is for the um, hideout. A lot of people are, you know, leveling up their hideout and stuff. And every four to five months, you're basically going to lose all your progress. And when you lose all your progress, people are going to be purchasing these items for more money once again. So they're always worth a lot more at the beginning of a wipe because obviously a lot of people are buying it because they want to get through their hideout. You honestly don't want to get be too worried about the hideout in the beginning when you're trying to learn the game because that's kind of like extra stuff. It's going to give you extra stash. Uh, space if you have like the standard edition and stuff but I can tell you for a fact if you're a new player you're not going to need stash space because you're going to be dying a lot the number one thing about escape from Tarkov is you are going to die so many times it does not matter how good you are at first person shooters you could be the best first person shooter player in the world and you are going to get your ass kicked when you first get on this game and that is because i believe it's about 80 percent knowledge and 20 percent skill your skill comes obviously in handy when in uh 1v1 situations but a lot of this game is very slow paced and you got to take it slow and you got to get some gear and you got to play smart now a lot of people will just go into this game playing it like it's call of duty and you are going to rage quit this game so fast. You have to play a little bit slower. You've got to listen for footsteps. You've got to know where the high, you know, traffic areas are to either avoid those areas or to go for them if you're looking for PvP. So, you know, now that I've been explaining this this long, if you don't know, this game is PvPVE. Um, there is no technical PvE mode except offline mode, which we are going to talk about, which is an absolute amazing feature that people should definitely take advantage of if they're new um so the idea is you spawn into this map and uh, a lot of players are spawning in with you there's npcs roaming around the map and there's loot that is scattered all over the map the idea is to get as much loot and then walk to the extracts now that brings me to my next point Ex learning the extracts and learning the maps is probably the hardest hump to overcome when first playing the game because in order to learn the maps you're going to die so many more times than you should be because you don't really know where people sit you don't know where the high loot areas are you're not going to know about the scav bosses so there's usually a 33 percent chance that a scav boss is going to spawn on certain maps so you got rashala on customs you got Killa on Interchange, which a lot of people are trying to kill Killa right now because uh, a new task came out where there uh, you can actually uh, earn Killa's tracksuit outfit, his Abibis. They call it Abibis. It's an Adidas knockoff. Um, you can use his uh, tracksuit if you kill him 100 times to unlock it. So Interchange is very popping right now. But if you don't know the scav boss spawns and you don't know what to look for, you're going to blindly walk into these scav bosses and you're going to die. Uh, a lot so to to prevent rage quit what i suggest you guys do when you first get the game is you're going to have your inventory you're going to have all this stuff you're not going to have as much stuff here in it but they're going to start you with some basic weapons and some some basic guns and ammo and stuff the best thing you can do in my opinion is do offline and scav raids so if you go here and you go to escape from Tarkov, you, you can see here that you can pick from two different classes. Essentially, your PMC is your main character. So this is going to be when you spawn in as a player at the start of a raid and you can bring in as much loot as you want. You can see my character is completely decked right now with a thermal M1A because that's the quest that I'm on. Uh, but if you want to bring in items this is going to be the character that you use so you will be spawning with a certain amount of other uh you know np or uh, pmcs and it will tell you when you click the map so um these maps that are locked by the way a lot of people don't know why they're locked they're locked because they aren't out yet so these are the only available maps that are out at this current time of me making this video at the start of 2020 so shoreline reserve 
reserve is the new map you got factory customs woods interchange and the lab the lab you're not going to really have to worry about because it is kind of like an end game map where you have to spend spend 200,000 rubles just to get a card just to enter the the, the raid um and there's you have a lot to learn on labs so i would stay away from the lab uh even though labs is amazing it's one of the coolest maps in the game i absolutely love it you're gonna have raiders running around there which are essentially overtuned uh scavs so it's just ai that have crazy aim and they have good armor and, and good gear and stuff same thing with the scab bosses scab bosses you're going to have really good armor they're going to have aim bot they're going to be destroying you so you got to know where they are um and also some of those bosses like rashala and uh gluhar uh, they have guards protecting them. So you're going to run into the scav bosses a few times. It's it's rare and they only spawn in a couple of spots. Like I said, it's a 33% chance. Um, but it's going to happen. And you're going to die very fast. And you're going to be like, oh, I got killed by the scav boss. So once you start learning the like their spawns and stuff, it won't be as bad. Um, the first map I would suggest learning is customs. Because that's where most of your uh, beginner tasks are going to be. So before you even start a raid. Make sure you go into trading. And then this is going to show where all of your vendors are. So you have different vendors that you're going to sell different things to. Um, so you got proper. Which is just a normal vendor. Who you're going to sell like grenades to. And, and weapons and that kind of stuff. Starting out. I say starting out because he's pretty much a scam artist. Um, you don't want to really be selling stuff to him once you don't need to level him up anymore because remember you have to you have to buy and sell items from each of these vendors in order to unlock higher levels and you also have to have a certain amount of rep with them now when you click them it'll say current attitude and then it will show what level you have the vendor then it will have the level that you are it will then have your rep with them, which some vendors, if you do certain quests for them, your rep will go up with them, but it will go down for another vendor. So you want to have to go do some quests for that vendor that you lost rep with to get some rep back. So essentially, there's a threshold. You have to be a certain, uh, you know, you have to be a certain rep with them in order to unlock these levels. And it will also show you on the right here how much you've spent with them. This is buying and selling. So if you want to cheese this, you can just by buying items and then reselling them back to them. But you are going to lose a large amount of money for doing that. Uh, but if you're like really close to the next and you just have to spend a little bit, a little bit of money, you can do that. So um, that's just proper. Therapist is where you're going to sell all your meds and like mechanical type items, like items you would find like in a garage or anything like that if you want to level her up. Remember, most of these things are going to be better on the flea market. Fence is basically the flea market before the flea market. This is where you sell items uh, to that you can't sell to anyone else. He is the absolute bottom of the barrel worst. You never want to sell the fence unless it's an item that's either too durability uh, too low durability for it to sell on the flea market like no one's gonna want it or it's like you're, you're like scav knives like stuff like that you can save up scav knives i think to trade for an mp5 but i just usually sell it to fence just to get it out of my inventory but never sell the fence ever it, it's bad it, it you know all these people who are selling the fence probably have no idea what they're doing um they're just doing it but he gives you an incredibly low amount of money um and it's not worth it also, you're going to have a lot of items like what you just saw I did. Uh, you're going to have a lot of items blacked out like that. That just means that you need to examine them. Uh, remember, this game does have RPG elements. Uh, so when the game fully releases, you're going to be learning each time a new item comes out. And you're going to get uh, uh, XP for that. So you can just click your middle mouse wheel and it, uh, it when you hover over an item that isn't learned yet. And it will automatically just learn it for you um it will examine it uh it's better to examine as many items as you can in the pre-game lobby i would go through all the vendors i would go through the flea market because if you you don't want to have to examine an item during a raid that is absolutely like it's just an extra thing to do you're going to see in a lot of your raids you're, you're not going to have time to be examining it so if you can get as much examined from the vendors and from the flea market as you can i think that would be ideal because then you know like i said you can't you can't interact with things that you don't have learned so learn as many of them as you can you'll see it all over the place you can just go through all of it and just like you know examine anything that you don't have 
Okay, so I told you guys how to get through the vendors. So this is a cool little trick that I learned when coming when it comes to making the most amount of money. Okay, so there is a esports team called TSM Team Solo Mid. This is the best way to remember which vendors to sell to. You first try to sell the therapist. If she doesn't take it, you sell the skier. If skier doesn't take it, you sell the mechanic. That's it. When you're trying to get as much money from vendors, that's pretty much what you're looking at. Now, remember, you want to sell the vendors in the beginning, unless it's an item that sells for significantly higher on the flea market. So I'm talking about labs key cards. So just to give you guys an example, if I go to sell to this, uh, sell to therapists here, these labs key cards are selling for 75,000 rubles. Okay. Now, if you right click an item and you want to see how much it's worth, you go to filter by item and it will actually show you on the flea market how much these are going for. So some of these are even going as low as a hundred K, but I guarantee you this is instantly gone because people buy these up fast. So you're usually looking around if you do happen to get a, a labs key card on say a scav run and you just leave, um, you're looking at 180, 190K. So when it's that much higher on the flea market, you wanna sell it on the flea market, even if you don't have your vendors level. Because you got you gotta have some money, man. You know, when you're starting out, you're gonna be losing gear, you gotta have some money, you gotta stay sane. That's that Tarkov is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It's a long-term investment. You're not going to be amazing right away. And it's a slow, slow process when you're first starting out. You're going to build your money little by little by little because you don't know all of the tricks, all, all of the, the shortcuts yet. So I wouldn't worry about that. But remember, you're not going to open the flea market. You're not going to like be able to use the flea market until you're level five. So up to level five, you're just going to be selling to vendors and, and uh, leveling them up as much as you can. So remember TSM, if you're selling to vendors, you want to get as much money as possible, but you know, flea market, you're usually going to always want to sell stuff on the flea market, especially when your vendors are maxed. Like I sell almost everything on the flea market, but you got to remember you only have uh, three offers starting out. And I think you start with two and then I think you gain three and then eventually you unlock four when your uh, rep is high enough with the flea market. But things like armor and stuff like that, your best bet is just to go to the flea market and uh, I always go up to this filter and remove bartering offers because literally every single barter offer that's going to be on the flea market is pretty much going to be a scam. It's people just trying to take advantage of other players that don't know better. So you're better off going like this and then I usually click this price thing here. Like, dude, there's some, there's some, I don't know. There, there's some people trying to scam some players. So just, just make sure you click this. And, uh, you know, you can buy a, a card from, from therapists for 160 or 186,000. There's people here just trying to bait you into pressing purchase on accident. It's really unfortunate. Uh, so yeah, just do that. And then you'll be able to see how much it's going for. If you want it to sell really fast, cause you don't have like a ton of offers available. Um, you can always undercut. So if I was going to sell right now, I see a hundred, one thirty, one thirty. These two are going to go super fast. So you would probably, if you wanted to sell this quick, you could probably go one seventy nine 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 nine, and it'll probably sit for like maybe 20, 30 seconds and it'll instantly be sold. Um, and you want to make sure that you're gonna that your items are gonna sell because you don't want your rep to ever go down. If you put an item up and it's too pricey and no one buys it, your rep will go down um, and they'll send you the item back. So you don't want to do that. So now that we went over that, um, you're probably just kind of getting acquainted with the inventory system and how to move stuff around. And if you hit R, you can rotate stuff um, while you're holding it. So if you wanted to, for example, say I don't know like right here, say there was a pocket slot here. Obviously I can't put this in here, right? So if you turn it sideways, boom, slides right in there. And uh, that'll help you out during raids too. Um, you know, say you're pulling in your backpack and there's only two slots down here, Just throw it down here. And then uh, yeah, it's, you wanna throw the most expensive stuff into your gamma container as soon as you get it. Cool little tip about this, right? Say this AI2 right here is is an item that's worth like 300K. Or, or let's say it's a LEDX. So if you ever find a LEDX, throw that shit right in here. It's like 1.2 mil. Instead of having to drag it to the actual square, you can just drag it to the to the picture. That way, if you're, you know, if you're in a rush and you're about to get shot at and you want to get that item in, there you go. It's really quick. 
instead of having to set it perfectly in here because if you drag it here and you let go it won't go in because it thinks you're trying to drag it in this slot so just drag it to the picture and it'll put it right in if there's an available spot there okay so we got a couple of items here just just uh just for dummy items just to show you guys kind of like the idea of how we would go about selling this stuff right so say you got this stuff here so first i'm looking at popular items when it comes to flea market so popular items would be you know really popular uh red dots so i'm talking about pk06 is one of the most popular red dots valde is probably one of the most popular scopes because it's just one of the best scopes and and, and has the best uh um kind of crosshairs for a scope at least in my opinion so those things are going to sell a lot and you'll get an overall idea for this but any type of mods or attachments are usually going to go for pretty good on the market because a gun's value comes from its attachments not from the gun itself remember that now obviously the base gun is going to have a little bit of value but the value of a weapon comes from its attachments so looking at this if i wanted to sell this to vendors remember tsm right now obviously i know the only thing that's going to go to therapist here is this because she doesn't take like weapons or weapon parts or anything like that but as a new player you want to just go through the the tsm uh to just make sure okay so okay i'm gonna sell this I'll sell that and then i'm gonna go to skier skier takes attachments and clothing so i see okay so you know i can't sell these two things so i'm gonna go through and sell this stuff to skier but then i may look at this and be like hey 22k all right i could sell this to skier especially if you're trying to get your you know your level up with them but what if i right click this and go to filter by item and see how it's much it's going for on the flea market and you look here okay so the lowest available purchase is 32,550. So you go here and you're like, okay, let's see if this sell it is selling, right? Let's see if this if we refresh if that's gone. It's gone. Okay? So you know that these there are people buying this scope, right? Somebody just uh, like somebody just undercut here, they're putting one up for 30,000, but you know they're going pretty fast, right? So let's actually just go back and add offer, click at the top click the scope and let's put it for 32,999. It's going to show you the fee at the bottom. You want to make sure that fee doesn't uh, overlap how much you would have made with the vendor. Don't forget, we we're going to sell this for what? 24K. So we're going to make an extra 8,000, uh, 9,000 by selling on the flea market. Just click place offer. And then you can go to the top if you close out your your the the biggest problem you're gonna have with the flea market is the filters here they it, the way it's set up is kind of weird just make sure you click the x um if you don't want to be looking at that exact item anymore and then you go to my offers and it'll show you now it gives you two minutes say you post something for the wrong price or you post something that you didn't want to post that does happen in this game it, it is a scary thing as well uh so you know if you ever want to remove this you have a certain amount of time to remove it before it goes up so there you go that's a bunch of extra money and then uh like we're gonna like i said you want to go tsm so the next would be mechanic and i'm assuming mechanic like there, there's never going to be anything besides i think grenades i think grenades are the only thing that neither of these people will take and you want to just sell grenades on the flea market if you sell it to proper he just scams you so remember, if you want to just gain uh, like a level or something, you want to spend money with these people, all you got to do is just buy an item and resell it over and over again. So um, say, for example, Ragman, if I wanted to uh, buy this, the the Kiver helmet, okay? Say I buy this, I'm like, okay. So I'm going to buy it for 32K. The money spent's going to go up. If I sell it back to him, I'm going to lose money. But this is still going to go up as and can be considered as money spent. That's a really cheap way you can do it really fast if you want. But I would highly recommend just selling to your vendors. And then you have different vendors that give you different currency as well. So for example, on Peacekeeper, his stuff is all sold in dollars. And if you go to his level one, you can actually trade. It's, it's funny, you can use rubles to buy dollars, which you're essentially doing a currency exchange if you want to get dollar bills as well. And you can also do this, I think, with euros with one of them as well. But I don't remember which vendor it is. If you want euros, I think it might be Skier. Let's see. 
uh, level one, level two skier, you can buy euros. So if you're trying to mess around with some of the other currency, most of your currency is going to be in rubles though. So, all right, now let's get into, now that you've gotten kind of a, a basic idea of the inventory system and the overall uh, reason to play the game, right? You want to make as much money as possible, stack as much loot as possible. Here are the two different types of, of classes that you can choose, right? So you got your PMC, which is your main character. I think I got really sidetracked when I was first trying to explain this. And then you have your scav, which is up every 20 minutes. Now you can lower that timer to like, I think 17 and a half minutes or maybe even close to 15 minutes uh, by leveling up your hideout. But a scav is essentially a free run at loot. You are basically assuming the position of an NPC in a raid that is already ongoing. So that means all the players spawn in, all the PMCs, they run in, they're going, they're grabbing a bunch of gear, they're fighting each other, whatever. And then you have the AI scavs that are in the middle of the map that are doing their AI thing. They're going around, they're shooting players and do not take AI lightly in this game, by the way, guys, they will kill you. And then you're going, when players die, you're going to have uh, player scavs spawning in. So as a player scav, it's going to give you a uh, loadout. It's going to give you random items in your bag. And sometimes it's even going to give you something as good as a red key card, which is incredibly rare. And it's only happened a few times. The, the chance of it is incredibly low. But the red key card goes for like, I think, 17 or 18 million on the, on the flea market. So if you ha ever have any type of labs cards in your backpack when you're starting out, the best thing you can do is just run to the extract. I would look up like on another monitor um, or even just, you know, if you're playing in windowed mode and you can just tab out real quick. I would look up a map of all the extractions. Extractions are gonna be one of the hardest things for you to learn in the beginning of the game because you gotta learn the maps, you gotta learn, you know, which side of the map you're spawning on and where your extractions are gonna be. There you go. Look, I think it, I think it sold. So you go to receive all and it looks like my san 107 key didn't sell that's a bummer we'll we'll, uh, we'll try to resell it um and so you want to do your scav runs as much as you possibly can but obviously like i said there's a 20 minute cooldown right so what you're gonna do in between this is first of all gear up a little bit grab some of the starter items that they give you and then you're gonna go here you're gonna go to pmc now remember this is when your scavs on cooldown because if you die as a scav you don't lose anything it's basically basically just a free chance at free loot. So you're gonna go to PMC, you're gonna click the map that you wanna learn. The first map that I suggest learning is customs, okay? Because that's where most of your you know beginner uh, quests are gonna be, your tasks. Um, and then you're going to go down here, you're gonna pick uh, either daytime or nighttime. You usually wanna pick daytime because that's the best way to learn the map. You gotta be able to see, right? Click next, next, and then this is the big part here. Now, if you were just gonna go into the raid and, and play the game like in its basic mode, you would hit next here. And then you can ensure your items here, which uh, we would we should probably talk about another time. You're not gonna really be uh, ensuring too many things when you're first starting out because obviously you're not gonna have a lot of money. Uh, but ensuring is one of the most overpowered things in the game. You can basically right click something, you click ensure, and it, for a small percentage, and I think this is gonna get nerfed eventually, um, you can basically have a chance for a vendor, um, depending on the one you pick, proper or therapist, to send your loot back to you if you die and no one loots your gear. That's the only time that happens. So then you would go in and then you would just, you know, here's all the people that are playing right now. There's a lot of people on customs. It's crazy. Um, but if you're starting out, I highly suggest not doing that because that's what I did. I just started going into raids and getting wrecked. And that is the perfect formula for rage quit. I highly suggest clicking enable offline mode for this raid, enable PVE, AI difficulty as online, AI amount as online, you can even enable bosses here. I still do this to this day, even though I, I know a lot about the game and I've played the game for like a thousand plus hours. I still like to enable bosses so that I can see where the scab bosses spawn. 
So if you enable bosses, it will spawn the boss every time. You know, it won't be a 33% like it usually is. It'll spawn every time. You go to next, and then you're basically going to play a raid by yourself. There's going to be no other players, and you will be able to learn the extractions. You will be able to learn where loot spawns. You will be able to learn the certain pathways where scavs will spawn and will move around and try to shoot you. This is probably the most helpful thing that i wish i knew when i first started playing tarkov it is so incredibly good and i saw somebody earlier in a, in a twitch chat who was like oh you're never gonna learn anything if you if you don't play against other players and it's better just to go right in i highly highly would advise against that and the reason is is because the pvp in this game you're, there's really not much to learn besides things like bullet penetration and how bullets react with armor and stuff. And all that stuff is going to come over time. And I do highly suggest that you guys install the Battle Buddy app. Um, it is available on Android and uh, iPhone. Veritas made it, who is another big uh, member in the community. Um, he made an app that is absolutely amazing. Um, there's so many things you can do on there. You can do damage calculators. You can uh, figure out the chances of certain bullets penning certain armors. It's absolutely amazing. Be sure to download that app. Seriously, it's helped me so much. Um, so you're going to spawn in just like a normal raid, except the difference is that there aren't going to be any players. So you can sit here and you can learn the extractions. If you double tap O, it'll show you where uh, where you need to go. And uh, the, the ones like the extractions with question marks are temporary, uh, so, which means that if other players take it or it doesn't spawn, you can't use them. And you're just going to go in just like a normal raid and you're going to be able to see where all the scavs are and just pretty much not have to worry about dying or losing loot. And the cool thing about this is that you don't get gear, so people can't abuse the offline mode. So it's literally just for practice. That's it. Nothing else. It's it's just for practice. All right. So we killed Rashala and uh, a couple other scavs. Got some loot. Now, right when you get out of the offline mode, this is usually where you would drag your gear that you got. Uh, but obviously, because it's offline mode, you're not going to be able to keep any of the loot. But you're also not going to lose loot either. So really, the, the whole point of offline mode, see, we would have had 17k xp we, we killed a good amount of scabs we got rashala and his whole little army here now when you go next this is where you would drag all your items back over um but obviously it's not going to uh keep any of this stuff but you're also not going to use ammo or anything like that so just want to learn the extracts this, the maps i would try sticking to learning one map at a time um and obviously you can see everything went back uh, to what it was prior. Um, I would stick to one map. I would try to learn customs first and then uh, factory is kind of an easy one to learn, but you're not going to be doing too much factory. There is a couple of early quests, but um, factory is usually more for uh, a little more experienced players who want to get into PVP very fast. Um, I would suggest doing like interchange scav runs. Um, what's kind of happening is uh, there's a lot of geared players on interchange now, like trying to kill Killa a hundred times, like I said earlier. Uh, but you can go in, loot, you know, either Ollie or Idea, grab as much stuff and just run to the exit. Also, don't feel ashamed if you're doing your scav run. If you have something rare on you or something that's worth a lot of money, don't feel bad about just running out the extract. You can do that. It's okay. Um, you know it's a valid uh it's a valid strategy so um don't ever be ashamed to do that but like i said do your scav run every 20 minutes just do it just go in you you never know you might just waddle across a fully geared player that's dead and be able to grab all their stuff and extract it's happened to me many times but remember if you do spawn in as a scav it's usually wise not to shoot other scavs because scav ai won't shoot you if you spawn in as a scav but other player scavs can. Now, the way you know it's a player scav is because player scavs are the only ones that can, like, look up and down. Um, you know, the regular AI usually don't do that. They usually just walk around and look very stiff looking. Um, and uh, the AI are the ones who usually speak as well. Uh, and you can tell if you killed a player scav when you scroll down and you'll see a pouch 
uh, underneath the backpack slot. That's how you can tell if it's if it was a player scab or not. Some people like to do the wiggle wiggle dance to let you know that they're they're uh, friendly. I highly wouldn't recommend uh, trusting these people because what a lot of people do is they'll wiggle at you uh, till you're friendly. Wait till you stop moving and they'll just blast you and take all your gear in case you have something rare. So. I wouldn't trust anyone in Tarkov, man. Like it's it's one of those games where people want your loot and uh, they may act friendly, but the second you stop moving, they're gonna blast you. So when I do scav runs, when we come across players that aren't in our group, we shoot them. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun to work with people that you don't know without communication sometimes, but I will let, I'm just gonna tell you straight up, it's gonna end poorly, you know, 90% of the time. So once you start learning the maps a little more, you start getting more comfortable with the extractions. I would start working on your tasks. Make sure you accept your tasks when you go to a certain vendor. So for example, your starting tasks are most likely gonna be proper. You go to task and then um, it will say, uh, it'll say, I'm trying to remember what it says. I think it says like accept, I believe. And then, yeah, right here it'll say accept, and then it will put the the task here, but I gotta complete this. I am so, so close to getting my Kappa container. Yeah, so it'll say it like right here. This, I gotta survive at every map without dying. That's crazy. Uh, and then I think the there was a, uh, I'm done with the Jaeger. This is the new task that I was talking about that you're seeing a lot of geared players on interchange. They're trying to do that so, to get the kill outfit. And I got to get this to 10, so that'll be cool. And then, uh, yeah, we're like almost done. That's kind of crazy. It's crazy to think about. This Psycho Sniper is another one that I need to turn in. And I think that's mechanic, yeah. So turn that in. And, and you will get rewards from turning in tasks. So uh, usually starting out with your tasks isn't a bad way to make some uh, money. You can always go in with pistols too if you're scared to lose gear. Uh, just bring in pistols, but make sure to grab decent ammo. I, I, I would highly suggest grabbing like something like an M9 with uh, AP63 rounds because you can pen helmets with that ammo. Um, it's not great, you know. Obviously, nine millimeter isn't the best, uh, but you know you can do that. Or you can use a 5.7 and use either SB193 or 11 or L191. I think it is. Um, so yeah, I would definitely look up an ammo chart. Look up a map just to get all your extractions. Don't forget the Escape from Tarkov uh, wiki is very good as well. It'll tell you what you need to do to complete your tasks and it will help you and let you know kind of what keys uh, you need for for each task and stuff. So really, that's, that's pretty much it. Like you guys, for those of you guys who watched through this and actually listen to me and understand what I'm saying, you're going to have a much bigger understanding of the game now. Now, I do want to make follow-up videos with maybe some tips and tricks and other stuff, but I basically just gave you guys the breakdown, you know, get used to your key binds as well. There's a lot of different ways. Like, I mean, um, you may not know this if you're brand new, but in order to fill mags during a raid, you have to fill them one by one. So you want to make sure to have extra mags on you and stuff like that. But that's all stuff you learn over time. And, and you're going to learn that stuff. Uh, when playing in offline mode. So I, like, honestly, guys, please take advantage of offline mode. Don't go in and just jump right in when you don't know the extractions, don't know the maps, don't know where, but like learning, like fighting players is the easy part, right? Like fighting, like the hard part is learning the extractions, learning where scabs spawn, learning where the scab bosses spawn, learning what's worth what. That's all the hard stuff. And then I think once you start to learn that stuff, you will have a lot easier time on this game because then all you you just got some players in your way. That's all. You just get them out your way real quick and then you're good. You move on your way. So I hope this video really helped you guys out. I, I, I was really excited to make this video and to kind of break down a lot of stuff. I know for a lot of people, it's probably a lot of talking, but I promise if you just sit and get through this video, you will have so much more knowledge about the game. So remember, download that app. Uh, it's called Tarkov Battle Buddy. It's on the Apple uh, store, and I think it's also on the Android store as well. Um, and that app will teach you so much about the game, different bullet pens, which bullets to look for and to keep. And, uh, you know, when it comes to weapon modding and all that other stuff, you learn that down the road. Um, one more thing I forgot to, to mention is when you're selling weapons. Okay, this is, this is a good one that I almost forgot. 
when you're selling weapons so let's take this aks 74n for example if i want to sell this i can just sell it right to mechanic right and it will give me 65,000 rubles. You always want to do this, especially if you need money. Disassemble. It'll completely take the gun apart. And then you sell it in parts. Why? Because, well, mechanics pays less than skier does for certain attachments. So if you go here and you go to sell the skier, you're going to make more money. But you got to keep in mind, you got to look out for the popular stuff. I always like this grip. See how it's selling for 12K. I think I actually think this grip sells for like 20 something thousand. So go here, move barter items. Yeah, the lowest is 39K. This is a meta grip right here. This is one of the be better grips in the game. Um, if you want like a good uh, balance between ergonomics and uh, recoil control, which that stuff, I wouldn't worry about it when you're new. Um, but it's basically just stats that go into guns. So I could sell this for 40k and that will go like hotcakes. Same thing with the optics. I usually always check for red dots and stuff. Uh, yeah, so instead of selling for 12k, I could sell this for 19. Remember, if you want things to sell fast, you can always undercut. Some people hate when people do that, but gotta do what you gotta do to make money, man. And then this is where we would go through the rest of the stuff probably doesn't matter so we just go through sell this stuff to skier and then remember tsm now obviously i skipped the t because i know i don't have any any uh like medical items that would I, I would sell to her so and over time you're just gonna learn you know and and we made much more money off that weapon than if we were just to sell it to mechanics straight up so that's pretty much it guys hopefully this guide helped you guys out let me know if you guys have any suggestions or uh you know have any questions in the uh you know comments down below or you can always stop in during my live streams i stream at twitch.tv slash like butter live come by say hello and uh, if you ever have any questions for me feel free to ask thank you for watching this video hopefully you enjoyed and i will talk to you guys in the next one take care everybody